All right, so we're back with the only game where every comment is asking about new ways to torture the creatures in order to force them to evolve. It's species. I'm serious. Like, whenever I look at the comments section, it's never like, Gray, stimulate the creatures so that they can enhance their intelligence and, like, learn a new language. It's always like, Gray, burn them until they learn to adore it. However, one of the questions was, what would happen if you took a nice, plentiful, beautiful land with water and plants and everything else and turned it into a radioactive wasteland and repeatedly subjected the creatures to horrible mutant levels of fallout radiation damage. It actually kind of blows my mind that this is the game where you can literally do just that. Like, we, we can do that. We're going to do that. We're doing that. Here we go. Look at this place. It's freaking beautiful. It's got rolling hills and mountains and beautiful blue water. Everyone wants to live here. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it's like Montana or something. All the creatures will be very happy until I start to take everything away and turn this into a hellhole of sadness. Let's friggin' do it. As we roll across the landscape, let us look at how beautiful everything is. The trees with green leaves, the grass so lush and glorious. Our little armless humans looming in the background because for some reason, every time I freaking genetically put some humans in, they always get born without arms. Oh look, this guy has arms but no legs. I hope you die. Either way, we've got some water creatures, we've got plenty of uh, land creatures, we've got floating creatures, we've got depressed creatures, we've got all kinds of different creatures. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let them be happy for a couple of generations just to see where things go. And then, once they've adapted to a type of utopian lifestyle where they have no worries, we're going to start to destroy the landscape and repeatedly expose them to horrifying radiation. I want to take a moment to mention something to everyone. We haven't even started to radiate this place yet. What the hell happened here? This is what happened. You see? You ask why there's there's war and conflict and, and stuff like that on planet Earth? Because if everyone was totally happy, the next step of evolution is to have ice cream cones coming out of our heads. Okay, do you want ice cream cones coming out of your head? Let's ask this guy. Hey, buddy. Do you want ice cream cones coming out of your head? No, Gray, I don't. Good. Bam. Don't worry about me. Just creating a new save file that's inevitably going to crash at some point. Sometimes I just think that this game is pissed off at me. What is this? Okay. Why? Why is is what would be a somewhat normal humanoid looking creature with a couple of extra like dolphin fins on its sides currently walking on two drumsticks? You know the turkey legs that you get in the vendor stalls at like Ren fairs and whatnot? That's that's its legs. That's what it that's what it's using for for locomotion. This guy just wants to be loved. See, he's trying to give people hugs, but there's no one around. Okay, now it's a little bit more scary. Now this thing's like 30 feet tall. I'm not sure I would want to get hugged by this. It's as big as a tree. This creature over here forgot what love was like, so it never developed arms. There's no need to hug. That kind of stuff doesn't happen in the family. You basically get booted out the minute you're born and you have to fend for yourself. I don't know why. Every time something gets in the water, it starts to develop like a manta ray head. You notice this right here? Hey buddy, you got a manta ray head? No. Just has like a pair of derp eyes. All the better to see underwater Ooh. with gra- <laughs> I couldn't even give you a full line, dude. Why is his meat pulsating? Is that supposed to be the meat floating in the water? Hey, rising water. Don't know where that tide came from. I guess it's just part of the game. Okay. So a bunch of generations have gone by. And everything, for the most part, is very happy to live in Montana. So happy, as a matter of fact, that right over here, we see a family of hubcaposauruses kind of moving around in their in their native habitat. Watch as they all hunchedly explode into a shower of bloody meat. So as it is, the very first thing that happens in the wasteland fallout style radiation apocalypse 
is uh, the world starts turning into a barren wasteland. So we're gonna go ahead and lower all this down a little bit. And the next thing that happens is everyone is uh, basically exposed to massive amounts of radiation. This is gonna happen over multiple generations. You can actually select all of the creatures like this, and then hit them. I'm gonna start out with five beatings of radiation. Now this doesn't affect the current creatures, it just messes with their offspring, so their kids can get pissed off at the amount of radiation their parents were involved in. I don't know if it was the radiation or the world starting to turn barren, but a lot of creatures are dying, man. Everyone's having a real rough time right now. Look at what's happened already. The creatures have begun getting like cancerous growths all over their body. That guy just exploded on his own. Oh look everyone, pine cones. That's adorable. They're like JPEG pine cones. They don't really have three dimensions. They just exist as little cardboard cutouts. Wow. Ah, hold on. I'm just gonna grab you momentarily so that we can see you in a better light. Right about there, perfect. This is what happens. This is the very first instance of radiation, and this is what we have. This thing's head is a enormous oversized coconut. Its body is like one third the size of its overall being. The rest of it is just head with tiny beady eyes. Do you have a family over here? I kind of hope you don't, but it almost looks, oh mother of Jesus. The giant cantaloupe, freaking hairy coconut melon heads are starting to breed quite well actually <laughs> holy god look at the amount of species well i guess this is a perfect opportunity to see what the world has done for us this is the slightly camouflaged double wiener potato pickle ah the hubcaposaurus has developed even more hubcaps to wear on its head i don't know if this is supposed to protect it from the radiation. It's like a tinfoil hat, see? It doesn't just have one though, it's got like four. There's actually quite a few of these that wear tinfoil hats. Everyone's, oh, this is like so close to the original species, it's not even funny. Okay. This guy got the bulk of the radiation, I feel. You, his, his face is affixed in a permanent stare of horror. Wow. Okay. This creature just looks like an exclamation point. That's all it is. It's just a giant exclamation point. A lot of hubcaps. Ooh. Apparently radiation also causes creatures to have meatballs for arms. Yikes. Oh, oh man. Oh, Fallout 77. Even better than Fallout 76. Man, they should have used these as enemies for the game. This thing's got freaking claws on it. I don't even, what are you? Are you, do you eat meat? You eat a little bit of everything. You just don't care. God, it's an insect. The game made its own insect. I didn't, this is amazing. It's like a praying mantis, but one that's like really fat and on drugs. This this was an amazing idea. Your, your idea is amazing. I, you don't get variations like this normally. Ooh, hi. Okay, I think this guy could use a little bit more radiation. That's, that's not even fair. Oh, it's like a blue llama, but a lot uglier. I'm not really sure if this is a tumor or if this is its brain being exposed through like a crack in its skull. Oh, hell yes, that's nightmarish. All right, let's, uh, let's move on here. Now, the, the wasteland isn't complete yet. The way, it's still, there's still trees, there's still green grass, people are growing tomatoes and stuff like that. And quite frankly, I'm not gonna tolerate it any longer. So it's time to turn the fertility down a little bit more. Here we go. All right, once again, I've almost killed everything. That's how you really cause great stuff to happen in this game. Because everyone starts to get real desperate when there's like 10 creatures left. More death, more sadness, and somehow life finds a way. Look at them desperately fighting back against extinction. 26 creatures, 27. Okay. The one being that has managed to survive is has now adapted to the fact that this place sucks. It's a mixture between the big head creature, like the coconut being, but now it has like extra eyes, a sneering mouth as if to say, screw you, Gray, and a whole bunch of really, really underdeveloped limbs. And so now, our job 
is to hit this being with 10 bursts of radiation in order to see what happens. The very first few generations of irradiated beings have come into creation. Let's see what happens when you cross potatoes, human beings, and throw a bunch of radiation in and force them to live in a wasteland that almost nothing could possibly- Hey, does that say scrotium? <laughs> oh, what an appropriate name. Scrotichium. Hmm, good. Perfect. If, uh, if anyone wants to rename this in the comments section, feel free to come up with something. This is one of the creatures that has learned how to beg for forgiveness. See, it's in the it's in the the submissive posture. He's like, Gray, we've had enough. All right, you've 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 frozen us, you've drowned us, you've taken all the water away and forced sharks to live on land. What's next? What is it? Radiation? Please stop. I'd like to think these are not limbs. It just looks like a boat rudder. Huh? I feel like this thing would be terrible at trying to hide itself from predators. This is one of the derpiest creatures that's ever been made. Oh my god. Radiation is amazing. I'm serious. Like, Fallout had, like, what, like, death claws and stuff like that? What the hell would you call this? What would you call this? What kind of beastly name would this have that attacks weary travelers as they try and go from one small settlement to the next? If you saw this, what would you do? You might as well just kiss your ass goodbye. Hey. This is interesting. It's like the Popeyosaurus. Look at this. It's got gigantic forearms. Let me just mention something real quick. Um, does anyone know where this thing's forearms came from? Came from this creature because it doesn't have any. Are you doing a somersault? Is this your normal walking posture? I'm not really sure. Ah, why? What is this game's affixation with phallix? This type of limb sees itself in a lot of different creatures. Wow, this creature is literally just a furry sweet potato. That's all it is. Like, there's a head, but if you didn't know that head was there, it's just like a vegetable. An omnivorous vegetable, which is a little weird, but still, it's like a vegetable. <laughs> Where would we be with that one creature with a giant head? Okay, remember what I said about the other creature and the big head? I take it all back. This is the new winner. It wins the big head pageant. You, sir, get first place. Well done. You got the blue ribbon. Congrats. Things are doing quite well. There's actually a few places where there's like a couple of pieces of grass left. Like, this is it. The rest of it's all just hot desert and savanna. But, uh, you know, there's a couple of oasises. Look at how well everyone's doing as they freeze to death and immediately destroy the few available trees that are around. Almost everyone at this point has adapted to live on the- the hell? No, 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 hold on, hold on. You come back. Get back here. What were you? You're just a really, really overweight creature. I- I mean, congrats for making it this far, man. But anyway, now that everything has settled and everyone is, for the most part, pretty self-sufficient, it's time to take the world and make it even worse. We're gonna get to the point now where I don't really think anything could possibly survive because there's almost going to be no fertility or things to eat left. So everything's probably gonna have to learn how to eat each other. Okay, everyone has finally gotten to the point where the uh, the species that are left have learned how to deal with effectively not having any real food. This place is now just made out of rock and desert. So let's see real quick who ended up living and then we're gonna blast them with 20 blasts of radiation. I feel like I saw this in Star Wars right there. I'm pretty sure I never saw that in Star Wars. Hey, one of the big head creatures <laughs> made it all the way to the end. Good for you. All right, now we select everything and 20 blasts of radiation. All right, I mean, we radiated the hell out of these things. Now it's time to see what the world has given us with all of the... All this thing is now is a head that's dual wielding mushrooms. Oh, hey, it's our potato, like our, what was this, like the hairy sweet potato? It's got a lot of fur on it. Its head has gotten even smaller and its expression has gotten even derpier. So, 
What is this? Is this its fist? It's just like really bad, really big hands. I guess it's so that I can really see it when it gives me the middle finger. It also has like one claw on its toes. It doesn't matter what category you're talking about. I feel like reasonable is not the correct way to explain any part of this creature. Holy hell, there's 11 of these. Oh, it's the scrotium or whatever it is. It's the primix scro scro scrotichium. I'm, I, I love the fact that the scrotichium, uh, uh, animal kingdom is continuing to flourish in this world and that its appearance is more horrifying than ever before. I don't know what's the front or the back. I don't know if this is the butt or what. One thing's for sure though, this thing's got a big pair of cojones on it. Hey, sure. It's like a submarine with a, all right. Like every time I play this game, this is even worse than the other one. You gonna tell me, game, that you just spontaneously came up with this idea for a leg? You gonna tell me that this looks like a leg? Mm. Oh, hey, cool, one of the layers of hell opened up. That's pretty sweet. You ever wonder what an ostrich would look like if you, like, grew it up back in Chernobyl? Kind of like this. It's like the ostrich poodle, effectively. Like, well, it's like a mutant ostrich poodle. From the scrotichium comes the scrotonus. It's the dinosaur of the scrotum world. This thing's actually pretty well camouflaged, except for the fact that probably like plants would scream at looking at it. Huh, this is interesting. Repeated bouts of radiation created a creature wearing Uggs. Well, pff, I'm pretty sure that right there is the head. Can you see it? I'm almost sure that's, hold on, I gotta find this creature. We're not letting this one go. Hey, tiny headicus. Is that your friggin' head? That is, that is absolutely its little micro head. Well, everyone, you wanted to know what would happen. You wanted to know what would happen. This is what happens, man. Hi. What the hell is this? It just looks like a shaggy hatchet. It's like a shaggy mobile hatchet with some leaves on it. You ever wonder what would happen if Oscar the Grouch mated with a manatee and then got hit by a lot of radiation? There you go. Okay. This kind of looks like a pet. I'm gonna say it. This this might this might be the most the cutest creature out of the bunch. It's a sad day when this is the cutest creature. If Satan was gonna send demonic giraffes to kill us all, this is the demonic giraffe. Once upon a time, we started with this. Many, many creatures rose and fell from that one potato-like being. But in the end, we are left with some of the most hideous and repulsive beings I have ever seen in this game. And that's friggin' saying something. <laughs> Mutant, you're not wrong. Oh, there it is again. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Species. Until the next time, stay foxy. How is this thing a friggin' carnivore? Oh my god. Stay foxy and much love.